humans of the internet, welcome to the channel. My name is Troy. Today on the episode, we're going to be talking about in-ear monitors. What are they, why do you need them, and how much is all this crap going to cost? And why the answer is way less than you might think. So let's get into it. So why do I even need in-ear monitors? Couldn't I just get a PA? And the answer is, yeah, you could just get a PA system. The problem with a PA system, though, is when you put a loud PA system in a small room, you start getting feedback issues really quickly. It's very difficult to turn a PA system up loud enough to where a vocalist can clearly hear themselves without also causing horrendous feedback all over the place. And that's especially true with a drummer that plays really loud or guitarists that refuse to turn down. Okay, so what are in-ear monitors exactly? Well, to find that out, first we're gonna clarify some terminology. What is a monitor? Well, in this case, and for the purposes of the rest of the discussion, a monitor refers to a speaker. They usually take the form of studio monitors or a monitor wedge. So an in-ear monitor is a speaker in your ear. And if that's starting to sound a lot like headphones, that's because it is. In-ear monitors are just headphones. So, if I don't need to spend hundreds of dollars on in-ear monitors, what can I get? And the answer is basically anything that's got headphones on the box. It's not super complicated. Any universal fit silicone tip headphone, these are a little more expensive. They run 70 US dollars, but you can go right down to 15 or even 10 US dollars if that's the mood you're in and that's the budget you're working with. You do not need to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars despite what industry giants would have you believe. All right, so now you might be thinking, okay, cheap monitors is all well and good, but doesn't wireless equipment cost thousands of dollars? And the answer is kinda, sorta, yeah. But there's an inexpensive alternative to that too. It's uh, one of these. It's called a cable. You might have heard of it. This one costs five dollars. It's 12 feet long. You can just use a cable. So the next most logical step for us to move on to after finding out that we don't need wireless gear and we don't need to spend hundreds of dollars on headphones, the next step for a lot of people is going to be some kind of mixing board. This is a relatively inexpensive Behringer board. You don't need to get one exactly like this. You only need as many things as you intend to hear. If you only have one vocalist in your band, you might only need one microphone input and a much smaller board and thus more inexpensive board should be able to fill your needs nicely. But if you have a band where all five of your members sing, you're gonna start needing a larger board and that's going to incur more cost. Boards like this one, these eight tracks run anywhere from 150 to 200 bucks. Um, you can find ones that are even cheaper down to 70 or $80 possibly. I'll see if I can find some Amazon on links to throw up for you, but something like this is what you're gonna need. All right, so the last and most important piece of equipment in this entire endeavor is the bit that makes it so more than one person can hear what's going on, and for that, we're gonna need a headphone amplifier. This is the Mackie HM4. It's functionally identical to the Behringer model. I can't remember what the name of it is. I'll put it down here. Um, there's all manner of clones of this. Some have more features, some have less. This one costs about 55 Canadian dollars, and it takes a single quarter-inch stereo input and splits that out into four stereo quarter-inch headphone outputs, and each output has its own individual volume control. This means that whatever you feed in, you get a clone of it out. So. This is uh, ideal for situations where you maybe just have a click track playing off your phone. You can run the click track into the headphone amp and then all four of your band members can hear the click track. Now, um, if you use an option like this mixing board, the mixing board also has a headphone out over here somewhere built into it. So you can send the main left right of your mixing board out to here and use the headphone out of the mixing board to send to a fifth band member. So somebody like your drummer, for instance, could use the headphone out on the mixer and everybody else can use the headphone amp. Grand totals. We have four pairs of headphones at $15 each. We have four cables at 
15 to $20 each. We have one headphone amplifier at $55 and one mixing board somewhere between $100 and $200 for a grand total of whatever this number is because I'm bad at math. So there you go, for about $400, you can get your band set up with a relatively simple in-ear monitoring rig, and obviously, the more things you wanna to add to that, the more complicated the rig gets, the more expensive it gets. If you need more band members, you'll need more expensive headphone amplifier. If you need to hear more things, you're gonna need a more expensive mixing board, but this is the baseline minimum that I could find. So all the links for things we talked about today are gonna to be down in the description. Feel free to click like, subscribe, bell icon, all that other crap. Leave a comment down below if you wanna talk more about in-ear monitors because I'm open to make more videos about this kind of stuff, more complicated setups and whatnot, uh, options for wireless units and all that if uh, that's a thing you guys are interested in. So until next time, kiddos, keep fit and get fit.